Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about the Amharas of Ethiopia. This information is taken from Atlas of Humanity, everyculture.com, orvillejenkins.com, and Wikipedia. Amharas are an ethnic group that lives mainly in the northern and central highlands of Ethiopia in Amhara region. Amharas also live in Eritrea and Djibouti. The tall mountains of this region served as walls that isolated Amharas from the rest of the world for centuries. But because of their militant history and proclivity for expansion, Amharas can be found in all parts of Ethiopia today. Amhara was a medieval province in present-day Ethiopia. Tigrayans and Amharas are the modern-day Abyssinians who, along with the Tigray people of Ethiopia and Eritrea, are referred to as the Habesians. The capital of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, was also the capital of the Amhara Abyssinian Empire. Amharas are believed to be Semitic people called Sabaeans from Yemen who migrated south around 1000 BCE to the southern side of the Red Sea and intermarried with the indigenous Agao people. Like Tigrayan tradition, Amhara tradition claims Am Amharas are the descendants of the legendary King Menelik I, an alleged son of King Solomon and Queen of Sheba. Amharas became a part of the Aksum Empire between 400 BCE and 900 CE. The Geta lion statues near Kombocha in Amhara region were built around the 3rd century BCE. An Aksumite church was built in Lake Haik in the 9th century CE and was converted into the Estefanos Monastery in the 13th century during the reign of Emperor Yakuno Amlak. Amlak established the Solomonic dynasty in 1270 CE and was officially accepted as ruler by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, or EOC, when he defeated King Za Iman Kun of the neighboring Zagwe dynasty in the Battle of Ansata. The Solomonic dynasty lasted until the overthrow of Emperor Haile Selassie by the communist Dur government in 1974. Throughout the centuries, the Ethiopian emperor was either Amharic or Tigrayan. Emperor Dawit I made overtures to his European counterparts. Thus, a letter from King Henry IV, reign 1399 to 1413 of England survives. Emperor Yeshak sent two emissaries to Alfonso V of Aragon, who sent two emissaries of his own and kind, who never arrived. In 1508, Emperor Lebna Dengel established diplomatic relations with King John I of Portugal. During the Abyssinian Adal War, from 1529 to 1543, 400 Portuguese musketeers led by Cristóvão da Gama helped the Abyssinians defeat the larger Muslim army when their navy reached Abyssinia by Massawa port in present-day Eritrea. Da Gama was captured and died in a later battle in the war. Ethiopia's modern boundaries are the result of Emperor Menelik II, reign 1889 to 1913, reconquering land lost by the Abyssinian Empire over the centuries. The Jamaican religion Rastafari gets its name from Haile Selassie I's name, Rastafari, 
while he was the equivalent of a duke. Selassie visited the Caribbean island nation in 1966. With a population of 20 million, Amharas are the second largest Ethiopian ethnic group after Oromos. Amhara speak Amharic, which is a Semitic Afro-Asiatic language and one of the five official languages of Ethiopia. Amharic is a combination of Sabaic from Yemen and a Gao from Ethiopia. Amharic is the language used by government institutions in Ethiopia. In 2018, more than 32 million people spoke Amharic as their first language and 25 million spoke it as their second language. Native Amharic speakers make up approximately 30% of the Ethiopian population. Amharic is the second most spoken Semitic language in the world after Arabic. Amharic was the official language of primary school education in Ethiopia until it was replaced by Oromo and Tigrinya in certain regions of the country. Like Tigrinya, Amharic uses the Fidel script, which is the only native African script still in use today. Like Latin to the Roman Catholic Church, Ge'ez is an all but obsolete language originally spoken by Amharas that is now reserved for the EOC and its original translation of the Bible. The predominant religion of Amharas for centuries has been the EOC, which plays a central role in their lives. 83% of Amharas are members of the EOC, 17% are Muslims, 0.5% are Beta Israel, and 0.2% are Protestant. Nestorian Christianity was introduced to the Solomonic dynasty around 350 CE by a young Syrian sailor by one account or two shipwrecked Syrian boys by another. Soon after its introduction, the Solomonic dynasty made Christianity the state religion and requested Syrian missionaries to come to Ethiopia to spread the Christian doctrine. The Solomonic dynasty also established relations with the Egyptian church, causing the term Coptic Egyptian to become a part of the official name of the EOC. Nine Nestorian monks helped build monasteries in Ethiopia and translated the Bible into Gez, the language in use in Ethiopia at the time. Lalibela is a town in the Amhara region that is famous for its churches carved into the earth between the 7th and 13th centuries CE. Lalibela is the most holy city of the EOC after Axum. Easter and Epiphany are the most important celebrations for the EOC. Members of the EOC also celebrate many other religious holidays, including monthly saints days. After Islam became the main religion in Egypt and Nubia in the 7th century CE, members of the EOC had little contact with the rest of Christendom. Therefore, the EOC has little in common with the rest of Christendom. Nonetheless, Amharas were able to limit the spread of Islam in the Horn of Africa. Like the EOC of Tigray, the EOC of Amhara has pagan elements that predate Christianity. Like Tigrayans of the EOC, every Amhara who is a member of the EOC has a patron saint that is recognized on the Saint's Day. On the Saint's Day, Amharas entertain guests with coffee treats and conversation. Also, chickens, sheep, and goats are slaughtered on the Saint's Days for feasting. Saints Mary, Michael, Gabriel, and George, however, are celebrated by all members of the EOC. Amharas also celebrate the Battle of Adwa Day when Ethiopia defeated the Italians in 1896 and Freedom Day when the communist Dur government was toppled in 1991. Two things to me stand out 
from uh, learning about the Amharas, uh, their history. One is, it's been said before, but you can really see it from, from the history of the Amharas, that Pan-Africanism did not exist uh, during the uh, medieval period. Uh, this is because during the medieval period, just as in Europe, uh, in Africa, religion was more important than race. And this is why uh, the, the Abyssinian or Amhara Solomonic uh, emperor uh, in, uh, made overtures to, to uh, Europe, uh, probably to to uh, form uh, military alliances, uh, political as well. And it's also why the Portuguese uh, sent many of their, their uh, uh, sailors to, um, uh, to help uh, the, uh, the Amharas f uh, fight their own uh, race, their own brothers who live, who were right next to them, uh, who were uh, Somalis, uh, the modern day Somalis, and the uh, the Amharas obviously are modern day Ethiopians. So they existed right next to each other, and they were at uh, constantly at war with each other. But the fact that uh, Europeans of the same religion as the Amharas came to fight against uh, the uh, people of the same race as the Amharas, the, the uh, Adel dynasty, the the uh, Somalis, uh, helps us to appreciate how and why Pan-Africanism didn't exist during the medieval period. Uh, religion was was the most important thing, and it it uh, it also explains why. Uh, Mansa Musa, around the same time, about a hundred years before before this uh, this war between the Somalis and the Ethiopians, uh, he traveled. He made his uh, famous journey, the Hajj, uh, for good reasons. He was a Muslim, of course, but he made his journey. He went n north east instead of south to be with his own brothers. And you had the uh, Ghana Empire, you had other, you had Nigerian empires, uh, you had other West African empires. Uh, but because he wasn't Pan-Africanist, because Pan-Africanism didn't exist at the time, and religion was uh, the main thing in the lives of medieval uh, Africans as it was for medieval Europeans, he went to his religious uh, brethren in, in Arabia. He, he made the trip there. But just imagine if they would have been Pan-Africanists. Uh, of course, it's, it would have been impossible at that time because it, it was just a different time. But if he, if he would have gone south and forged alliances, military alliances and so forth with the Ghana Empire, and the the other empires of uh, Nigeria, et cetera, and West Africa, even Angola, around the same time. Uh, by the by, the same token, uh, his name was King Alfonso. He changed his name when he became a Catholic of of Angola, which is pretty far south. They, they Mansa Musa could have gone all the way south to there. Um, going towards and all the way over to Zimbabwe, Great Zimbabwe around the same time. Uh, so, I mean, if they were Pan-Africanists, which they, they weren't, but it would, we would be in a completely different situation were they Pan-Africanists and not uh, very uh, religious people like the rest of, of uh, the world at the time.